Hello, this is Professor BRB. Today we will be learning to draw an isometric cube and we will use that cube to create a pattern that can be executed in many different colors. And you can see this is a, a blue and green version. Uh, this is a grayscale version. Uh, and there are really a lot of possibilities with what you can do with this kind of optical illusion pattern. Building block of our pattern will be this isometric cube. And isometric perspective is perspective without a vanishing point. Uh, and it is for that reason used by video game designers and architectural illustrators. Let's look at our page here. Um, our first step is to draw three identical squares. And if you choose your rectangle tool, and hold down your shift key. That will constrain you to a perfect square. I'm gonna just put this at default, stroke and fill here. And then with your selection tool, if you hold down the option or on a PC, the alt key and drag, that will give you a perfect copy. And then you can go to object transform, transform again. Now we have three identical squares. I'll make them a pale blue so that you can see what's going on here. Next, we will scale our three squares to make them into rectangles. So we select them with the selection tool and we choose our scale tool, holding down our option key or our alt key if we're on a PC. Just click once. We want to scale non-uniform, horizontal 100%, vertical 86.6%, and click OK. Next, we will shear our top and front squares by minus 30 degrees. So go to your selection tool, choose top and front and your shear tool is hiding underneath your scale tool. Hold down your option or alt key, depending on whether you're on a Mac or a PC, and click once. Just wanna type a minus in there to make minus 30, and click OK. Now, the side square will be sheared 30 degrees. Holding down option click, 30 degrees. Now we're down to this point. Next, rotate. We want to rotate the top and side squares by 30%. So with the selection tool, we select those. The rotate tool is right here. Option or Alt key, click. And 30 degrees. Our front will be rotated minus 30. So once again, your rotate tool, option or alt click, 30 is always there. So we just type in a minus and click OK. And here we are ready to assemble our cube. So we can take our front, Put it on the front, top, put it on the top, and our side, and put it on the side. Of course, it's a good idea to zoom in here, and I'm just going to turn my template off here. And I like to go to View Outline and zoom in on this corner and make sure that everything is snapped together just perfectly. And Illustrator is usually quite good about making uh, sure that you snap things together, but I always like to double check. So let's zoom back out. And go back into preview mode. And now we can assign some colors to our cube. First, I want to get rid of the black outline 
that served me well while I was drawing, but I don't want it in there on my finished cube. So I'm getting rid of that up in my control bar here. And I'm going to look in my swatches panel. And I'm just going to make a grayscale pattern here. So um, I'm going to assign three different values of gray to my cube. Oops. There we go. Make that a little darker. So I just have three values of gray giving me a little sense of three dimensionality. When I select all three shapes, now to create my pattern, I go to Object, Pattern, Make. And this opens up Illustrator's absolutely wonderful new pattern maker, uh, which is just so much better in CS6 and Creative Cloud than in previous versions. So it just tells me now that a new pattern has been added to the swatches panel. I think that's great. Click OK. I'd like to name my pattern. So I'm going to call it ISO Cube Gray, so I know what it is. And um, we have a choice for the way that Illustrator puts together our element. We just have one cube there. This is our base object. And it can be tiled by grid, brick by row, brick by column, hex by column. These are all make kind of interesting effects. But I think the one that I want for this pattern is hex by row. That fits it together just perfectly in a continuous pattern. And uh, one thing I should mention here is that in pattern mode, this is still editable. So if I wanted to change my colors or edit, in, edit this in some other way, I can. just change my base object and everything else will change with that. Oh, I'm just going to go Command Z, 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 get back to my grayscale. So I'm very happy with that. And I'm just going to click here, done. So now, get back to my pattern test layer here. I'm going to turn that on. and. Create a big square. Go to my swatches panel and find my new ISO cube gray. And I have a terrific pattern that I can use to fill shapes. Um, one thing I want to mention about the scale, the way the scale tool works with patterns is um, if you choose your scale tool and you hold down your option or your alt key and click on a selected shape, you have the option to turn off transform objects and turn on transform patterns. And then my pattern will scale and my object will stay the same size. And let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to go 50% and click OK. So you can control the um, way that your pattern appears in your shape. This also works with the Rotate tool. Again, holding down Option or Alt, I can turn off Transform Objects, and I can leave Transform Patterns turned on. So say I wanted to rotate this by 20%. That would rotate the pattern, but not the object. So that's just really a kind of a good thing to know that you can do. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you have some fun experimenting with the colors. Um, because you can create all kinds of interesting optical illusions with different colors uh, with an isometric, isometric pattern. So have some fun with it.